All right, Alex, thanks for that update. Time now for our top four and four countdown, where I review the top four stories of the week in four minutes. These stories consist of the most interesting headlines that everyone is talking about. Let's begin. First up, headline number four President Donald Trump nominated Judge Neil Gorsuch to fill the seat on the U.S. Supreme Court that has been empty since the death of Justice Antonin Scalia last February. Gorsuch is a man the country needs, Trump says, in announcing his nominee pick the evening of January 31st. First. Well, several news outlets reported that hundreds of demonstrators held a rally outside the Supreme Court building to protest Trump's choice of Gorsuch. Pro life organizations, however, were quick to praise the president's selection of someone who they say will carry on the legacy of Scalia. Gorsuch, a judge of the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Tenth Circuit, is 49, making him the youngest Supreme Court nominee in 25 years. He was born in Denver. Neil Gorsuch has begun to make the rounds in Washington, meeting with senators, posing for pictures, and hoping to get support from those on the fence about him. Well, sound familiar? That's the same ritual Merrick Garland, former President Barack Obama's choice to fill the seat of the late Justice Antonin Scalia, embarked on for several months after getting the nod for the job. Before we get to Trump's travel ban, there's another ban that might have slipped under your radar, especially if you watch CNN. The White House has refused to send its spokespeople or surrogates onto CNN shows, effectively uh, freezing out the network from on-air administration voices. Quote, we're sending surrogates to places where we think it makes sense to promote our agenda, a White House official said, acknowledging that CNN is not such a place, but adding that the ban is not permanent. A CNN reporter speaking on background uh, was more blunt, though. The White House is trying to punish the network and force down its ratings, end quote. The administration officials are still answering questions from CNN reporters, but administration officials, including White House Press Sec Secretary Sean Spicer uh, and senior counselor Kellyanne Conway, haven't appeared on the network's programming in recent weeks. Now let's look at the ban that everyone is talking about. The U.S. has taken in nearly 270,000 immigrants and refugees during the past decade from the seven countries affected by President Donald Trump's travel ban. An Associated Press analysis of federal data shows the greatest number arrived last year. Most go to the most populous states, but they also are spread out around the country. California has accepted the most by far, with more than 56,000. It's followed by Michigan, Texas, Arizona, New York, and Illinois. However, thousands have arrived in places such as Maine, Utah, and Nebraska. The AP analysis found that 2016 was the busiest year in the past decade for refugee arrivals from the seven countries targeted by the executive order. Iran, Iraq, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria, and Yemen. With just just a few quick strokes of a pen. President Donald Trump on Friday banned temporarily for now roughly 218 million people from entering the United States. I'm sure by now you know Trump barred citizens of the seven Muslim majority countries from entering the U.S. for at least the next 90 days by executive order, which a, which a senior White House official says uh, is likely just a first step toward establishing a broader ban. Well, we can't talk about the travel ban without looking at the protests that soon followed after. Americans from coast to coast took to the streets in support of immigrants and refugees affected by President Donald Trump's controversial ban. Protesters in Columbus, Ohio, for instance, shared videos on social media of police pepper spraying a crowd that refused to disperse. Otherwise, no arrests or disturbances were reported from demonstrations in front of state capitals and universities challenging what participants called a discriminatory policy against Muslims. Even here, you saw students from several Mississippi universities expressing their outrage towards the ban. Trump has denied that his executive order is a Muslim ban, saying, quote, this is not about religion. This is about terror and keeping our country safe. But in signs and chants, protesters across the U.S. proclaim the order un-American. Well, be sure to join me next week. I'll be putting together a brand new list of interesting stories, the big stories, the trending headlines, the breaking news that everyone is talking about. We'll be right back with more Sunrise after this.